Hello and welcome to Make a Difference, the show devoted to volunteers and volunteerism in Montgomery County. I'm your host, Bonnie Jo Ayers. The Prevention of Blindness Society of Metropolitan Washington was founded just over 75 years ago to bring eye health information to the Washington, D.C. area. Now, the largest local prevention of blindness agency in the United States, POB is dedicated to the improvement and preservation of sight by providing services, education, advocacy, and innovation. Each year, POB screens nearly 8,000 children for vision loss and strabismus and 5,000 adults for glaucoma, and it provides eyeglasses to nearly 8,000 low-income and homeless persons. Just after the break, we'll learn about the important role that volunteers play in POB and how they support the vital work of the organization. But first, here are some other volunteer opportunities available in Montgomery County. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Make a Difference. I'm your host, Bonnie Jo Ayers. Joining us to talk about volunteering with the Prevention of Blindness Society are Sarah Mashburn, Manager of Public Relations and Fundraising at the Prevention of Blindness Society of Metropolitan Washington, and Sally Ann Pilkerton, a POB volunteer. Welcome, both of you, Thank Sally, you. And Thank Sally you Ann and Sarah. <laughs> it's, it's like a... Um, an act, <laughs> Sally Ann and Sarah, that's very good. And we're so glad to have you on the show. Uh, Sarah, let's start with you. And in case anybody doesn't know about POB and all the work it does, let's start with the basics. What is its mission? Well, POB began in 1936 as an organization whose mission was to preserve and improve people's eyesight, again, through services, education, advocacy, and innovation. So that's been our goal for the past 75 years, and that's our goal moving forward. Now, talking about 75 years, that's a long time for an organization to survive. I know uh, different types of organizations, even ones like this with good causes, are having trouble finding people to support them. But 75 years is great. What do you think, or what is the uh, reason for its longevity? I think the secret to POB's longevity is that the organization has evolved to meet community and needs as they come up. So for example, one of the first things that POB did was start a children's vision screening program in the District of Columbia because there wasn't one at the time and they screened over 9,000 children. Later on, um, they noticed that folks with macular degeneration had excellent health care, but they didn't have a network where they could connect with other people with the condition. So we started our Macular Degeneration Network, which has evolved into 12 support groups across the area. So those are just two examples of how we've changed and why that is a secret to our success. And, and let me ask Sally Ann, who's a long-term time and term volunteer and now a board member, uh, would you agree with that? Uh, how has it kept going? It's, we have a marvelous executive director, Michelle Hartlow and her wonderful staff that she has and it's just been they're incredible they really are and this the volunteers that they have to keep this whole thing going and they reach out to everyone and it's that's what keeps it going it really does well it sounds like two good combinations of, of people and and foresight on on Absolutely. both ends because mm -hmm. a lot of it sounds like recognizing the need in the community for what you do. Right and Absolutely. then having medical professionals and volunteers from the community there to help us meet those needs. Um, let's talk about the volunteers. That's a All great right. segue into, <laughs> into what I wanted to talk about. Um, what kind of volunteer opportunities are there? I and mean, we probably don't have time to go into everything because I think in talking to Sally Ann before the show, there's a lot that people can do, but uh, I noticed on the website you, you've sort of broken it down into one-time events or projects and then ongoing things. So let's talk about the two types of sure. things. 
Well, in terms of the one-time um, event opportunities, we have two main events uh, during the year. The first is our Night of Vision Gala, which will be on March 24th, and Sally is actually the chair of that event. And so we need volunteers both on-site and in the office beforehand to help us prepare for the event, whether that means stuffing envelopes or organizing silent auction items. And then we have an American Girl Fashion Show, which is actually located right here in Montgomery County on November 4th. And that's a, a great event also for on-site and before um, hand opportunities, whether that means um, helping get ads for the program or dressing dolls or collecting raffle tickets. They're both really great opportunities to connect with our community and learn a little bit more about what POB does. Um, in terms of the more ongoing opportunities, there's two really great opportunities that folks can take to work with POB. The first is our resale shops, the Look Again shops. One is located on Kensington's Antique Row, and the other one is in Alexandria, right in the center of Old Town. And both of those shops are always in need of volunteers to do things like sort items, price them, and then even set up displays. Um, and actually, we have a great volunteer success story. The manager of our, one of our shops actually started as a high school volunteer. And she continued to spend time in the stores as she worked her way through college and then got her MBA at Johns Hopkins. And in 2008, she became our store manager. So that just goes to show you the success of our volunteer programs. And last, but certainly not least, and Sally can speak to this as well, is our screening programs. We always need volunteers to help us both with doing the actual screenings and then referring folks who need additional assistance to programs that can help them, whether that means a free um, pair of eyeglasses or an eye exam. Well, now, now that we've sort of whetted people's appetite and we'll get mm -hmm. into some, some details with Sally in just a minute, let's give a phone number and website so people can find out more. Sure, to learn more about uh, POB, you can call us at area code 202-234 one zero one zero or visit our website www.youreyes.org couldn't couldn't be better and they're both very easy to to remember exactly. fortunately <laughs> well sally let's talk about your experience you as i said are, are a long-term volunteer um well and we'll talk about what you've gotten involved with in a minute but how did you get started and i i sort of wanted to ask i guess a general question are the volunteers, especially those who've stayed a long time, do they have sort of a connection with uh, eye disease, maybe a family member mm -hmm. or something, or do they just like what the uh, organization does? Now, I know you have a personal story. My husband's an ophthalmologist, and I'm a nurse, and so we've been involved with POB for many years, but I really got involved more personally in around 2005, and very actively so, and it's been the best thing I've ever done. It really is. Uh, the opportunities, uh, like Sarah was saying, are just amazing. But also the referrals that we can follow up these patients and give them a place to go who don't have insurance. But they may go to the Washington Hospital Center, Howard University, I know the Fairfax Lions over there. There's places they can go. We can you know, give this to them. So that's pretty special. And you were telling me about uh, there are opportunities uh, for this and you were just participating in uh, the health in, uh, NBC4 Board. Health and Fitness Expo and we screened over 460 patients that day and uh, th after they're screened a physician goes over the results with them and then we ask them do you have insurance no I don't okay here are some places you can go here are some numbers you can call many of them do have insurance they go back mm -hmm. to their doctor but there's a follow-up there's a continuity you're not just leaving them say I'll see you again next year that's the most important thing to me and then uh, on the other end of the spectrum, there's the American Girl. American Girl is great. We, this will be our fifth American Girl this year. It started uh, five years ago. American Girl chose uh, POB to be their charity because we do so much with children, and it's gone over very well. It's you know it's not a pageant, it's not a contest. It's little girls dressing up and dressing up with their dolls, and having their grandparents there and having cupcakes and having a wonderful time. And we raise a lot of money for POB. Which is uh, the, the real, very serious purpose of the, the whole event. And Absolutely. of course, Valerie Tripp, the author, is a local resident. And she's too. there every year and brings a special little goodie bag of her own 
for each one of the models with her book signed to her. She's just wonderful. And they love talking with her. They absolutely yeah. love talking with her. Well, and, and another thing that I want to ask you about is you've done various things and get involved with a lot with the organization. Well, what kind of time commitment is, I don't want to say required, but involved, I guess? Well, you can make it as much or as little as you want. Um, I'm pretty much involved a lot, a lot with the P with the Merton Girl and with the Night of Vision. Um, and, but you get into it and you just can't stop. <laughs> you really can't. It's just a wonderful, wonderful organization and great people to work with. And they all feel the same way you do. And that's what makes it so wonderful. It really does. Well, we were talking about something that sometimes people don't think about in the way of a volunteer opportunity. But that's serving on the board and you were very complimentary about the work of the board and how everybody gets along. Well it's an outstanding board. As I said to you earlier, you can serve on a board and just sit on a board. Mm -hmm. uh, but these board members don't. Each one is involved with the programs. Our, they're, they're involved with the Night Division. They're involved with the American Girl. They're involved with our building program. So it's, they're all very active board members and great, great people. You know, and another way to volunteer, let's say you don't even have an hour of time a week, but you want to do something, is to donate items to our different resale shops. Particularly in Kensington, we're looking for maybe old jewelry or knickknacks, those type of things. If you're doing some spring cleaning, go over to the shop, take a look, drop some things off, and then maybe later on when you have some time, you can come by and become a volunteer. That's, that's, a, that's a great idea. Are there any specific requirements that you look for in volunteers or characteristics that you look for in your volunteers? I think the biggest one is a passion for service and you know there's people of all ages and all backgrounds who have that um, and we were talking about training earlier on and you had mentioned um, what kind of training was involved and I w was going to tell you that you know we really focus on having people learn while they serve so if you're going into the stores to be a volunteer other volunteers and the managers will walk you through different processes and you learn there and then you can keep coming back and use the experiences you've had and um, that goes for every other opportunity as well so maybe you don't want to be the chair of the gala the first year <laughs> but right. you can serve on a committee right. and you know start collecting auction items or help organize the flower arrangements so There's on the job training exactly everything That's is appreciated different. everything is Indeed. appreciated for sure and Sally Ann, let me ask you as we start to wind down here. Um, as a volunteer, mm -hmm. out there in the trenches, so to speak, one on one, uh, you know, on, on both ends of the, the spectrum, okay. what are the rewards, both for, the, I guess, the volunteers and. Uh, well, the rewards are many. Uh, for the volunteers, as I said earlier, when we're doing the screenings for glaucoma, when you can give them a follow up, tell them where to go, that's, boy, you're doing something. For the patient themselves, the recipient of that, they think, hey, this is pretty good. This is a great place I want to come back to. So it works both ways. It really does. And uh, just to close out, uh, Sarah, if you could give the phone number on the website one more time. Sure. The phone number is area code 202-234-1010. And our website is www.youreyes.org. And this organization is all about that, your eyes. So exactly. Sarah and Sally, and I'd like to thank you both very much for being on the show and telling the POB story. Well, thank, thank you, you for having much, us. Ronnie. Thank you so, for having us. Our guests have been Sarah Mashburn and Sally Ann Pilkerton, who have told us about volunteer opportunities with the Prevention of Blindness Society of Metropolitan Washington. To become involved with this or other local volunteer organizations or projects, call the Volunteer Center at 240-777-2600 or visit their website at www.montgomeryserves.org. And remember, as you've heard today, as a volunteer, you can make a difference.